So we're going to do ionic formula writing now. Now, the way this works, uh, the chart left off one very important thing, and that's polyatomic ions, so I want to show you an example involving that. Now, so far, you know, you've been given all of, like, you've, been, you've seen formulas with their charges, and you put them together, but now we're going to have to put a formula together simply from the name. So, like, look at this, like lithium sulfate. So now you're going to have to put this together like a formula from the name. No charges, okay, nothing like that. No cards, nothing like this to help you out. You're simply going to have to do it by looking at this. Now, thankfully, there's a very simple way to do this. First, you should have your periodic table. And you should hopefully remember all the stuff we told you about ions where you have like positive 1, positive 2 in this column, positive 3, negative 3, negative 2, and negative 1. If you did not write that down, do it now. <coughs> God bless you. So really, like, if you haven't written this on your table, write this down. Like, it's yeah, oh yeah. I told you to write this down on Friday. So remember, plus 1, plus 2, plus 3, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1. The stuff in the middle, that depends. We're going to talk about that in like 5 minutes. And, th and then this one right here, uh, like th those like tin and lead form differing ionic charges and carbon and silicon don't really form any ionic charges so don't worry about that yeah yeah I'm, yeah I'm gonna show you how to do this uh, I'll show I'm gonna show you it's simple now as far as lithium goes what is the ionic charge of lithium so it's plus one you know that because lithium is right there it's got a positive one so it's plus one. Now, sulfate. The reason we're doing this problem is because sulfate is a polyatomic ion. Now, if you look sulfate up on here, it's not on the table. So you would think that it's sulfur. That would be the first thought that most people have. So you would think it's sulfur, but it is not. If it was sulfur, it would be sulfide. That's how you change the ending. So just to be clear, if you see A-T-E or I-T-E as an ending, that indicates it's a polyatomic ion all the time. If you see it ending in I-D-E, that means an element off the table. Okay, just to be clear. So it's not on the table. So it's not on the table. It is instead on your ion chart. So on this ion chart, or whatever ion chart you might use, sulfate will be there. It's a very common polyatomic ion. It's right here. It's SO4 with a negative 2 charge. So you simply write down SO4, it's got a negative 2. Yeah. So is there anywhere to do, like, without looking at periodic table? I mean, until, until you get, like, the charges and stuff memorized, I mean, then you could, but you do, you do need to know the charges. Okay. You know, that's, you know, and you will eventually, truthfully. Now, at this point, remember, remember what's unique about polyatomic ions. They never split apart. So, SO4 is one thing. It will never break apart. And if you were to have more than one of them, you would need to put it in parentheses. However, in this case, you have a two here. You have a 1 here, and what you do with the charges, remember, you simply switch them. You bring the 1 down here and the 2 down there. So it becomes Li2 SO4 with no need to write the 1 because that can't, you know, you don't need to write that. Yeah? Is it the SO in parentheses? So the SO4 would be in parentheses if you had more than one of them. But do we, we only have one right now. Well, if, if you, if like the subscript was going to go down there that was more than one, if it was like a two or a three or something, then you put it in parentheses. Yeah, and I'm going to do an example. That's the next example. Are you going to ask something? What? Okay. Yeah, I know. So, uh, next, let's do one where you actually have to put parentheses around this. So, let's look at uh, calcium nitrate. Now, the reason that we're gonna that I want to emphasize the polyatomic ions is that you don't see them 
Well, you haven't seen them that much yet, but from now on, they're going to be around a lot. Like, you're going to realize, like, nitrate, you're going to know what it is. NO3 is a negative charge. Because, I mean, you notice it ends in ATE, so it's a polyatomic ion. You look it up on your thing. In this case, it's right here. NO3 with a negative one charge. It's nitrate. Make sure that you don't goof it up with nitrite. That's NO2. I know you're like, well, that's not a big deal, but, well, it's a completely different chemical. So don't goof it up. So, uh, nitrate is NO3 with a negative 1, and then calcium, it's CA, it's got a positive 2. All right, I know you're not totally familiar with this thing yet, but you will be very quickly by doing this. So CA plus 2. Now in this case, you take the negative 1, you take the positive 2, and you trade the places. So you end up with CA, NO3, but now, again, what you do, this is in parentheses with a 2 there. Now, the reason it's a 2, and just to, just to explain this again like we did yesterday, remember that nitrate is a molecule. This is a, that's not exactly right, but that's the general con sort of concept of it. And what this is telling you is that you have two of those molecules stuck there, okay? And each one is a negative 1 charge. So if each one's negative one and you have two of them, you know, it's like saying you have a negative one and a negative one, and then calcium has a charge of plus two. So those cancel out to be, you know, obviously plus two and negative two, those, you know, add up to zero, so they cancel out. So that's why you write this. Now to be clear, this is all you're gonna need to write down for your answer. All the rest of this is just me showing you how it's done. That's all you need. Like you're not going to need to show all this in, by the end of the day. You'll be able to just do it no problem. Okay? Now, that, now any questions on this? Really? On what? So, so again, it, the reason, so why you put it in parentheses, it's just, you know, it's a polyatomic ion, so that means it never breaks apart. So, like, NO3, it's saying you have one end bond to three O's. Now, if you were to write it instead, like, say you, like, multiplied it or something where you did, like, N2O6 or something random, like, that and this are completely different things. Like, that's implying you have two N's and six O's and some weird thing. This is saying that you have CA and you have N with O's, then you have another N with O's, like, like you have two of those going to CA, like two of the molecules themselves. If you wrote it like this... Well, that just doesn't make any sense. So, you know, that's why you put in parentheses. Okay. Does that make? Okay. Good. That would. Did that make sense? Oh, okay. I'll do that for now. Well, I mean, I haven't done that that type of explanation yet. So any. Okay. Good. Another one. All right. So that's these. That's pretty straightforward. I hope. Now, why don't you guys try one? This is about as difficult as one could assume. I don't know. Ammonium uh, phosphate. So ammonium. Just so you know, ammonium is a positive polyatomic ion. It's the only positive polyatomic ion we're dealing with in this class, really. It's, it's literally the very first thing on your chart right here. Yep. Now you notice phosphate, it ends in ATE. ATE implies polyatomic ion. If it ended in IDE, it would just be phosphorus. But it's not. It's not phosphite. It's Wait, why is it on your chart? It is on your chart. Right here. Phosphate's over phosphate here. And then remember I had you guys... Now, you guys also wrote in phosphite, right? Yeah. No. If you did not... Please write it in now, so you have it. Yeah. Because again, so phosphate, the reason this is not P is because this, like if you end something in ATE, it becomes, it's a polyatomic ion. That's what, the, that's what the word means. If it was going to be off your table, it would say phosphide. The ending is what signifies what you have. <laughs> so 
so ammonium's kind of unique. Ammonium is just it's, it's just a positive polyatomic ion. That's the formula. So if you, if you do see ammonium, you're just gonna have to remember it's up there. All right. It's the only one like that that you're gonna have to remember. Okay. So if you had phosphide, that would be it. But otherwise, it's just PO4 negative three. So what you do, you take your negative three, and you ignore the negative sign. Remember, you just simply take the three, and you put it over here. Now, positive one, you simply take the one, ignore the positive sign, put it there. So NH4 in parentheses, three, PO4. With no need to include the one because you don't need to, it's one. So you don't put parentheses around PO4 because there's only one of them. If you were to all of a sudden have two or three or four, then you would put the parentheses around it, okay? Yeah. Yeah, if, if like both of them had more than one, you could put presses around all of them. It's fine. Not a big deal. Good? Alright. So, so this is good. Now, uh, no questions on this? No. Alright, then there's one other thing I need to show you. Uh, that's gonna, this can be a little confusing, though not always. So, let's say that we have something a little different. Let's look at a formula or a name, we'll say iron, uh, iron nitrate, whatever. Now, iron is what? Iron, Fe. Iron is Fe, but where is iron? In the transition metal. It is a transition metal. So, that means that you do not necessarily know how to find the charge of iron. Because if you look here, so if you look here, iron is in the middle. I've not given you a charge. Okay? If you look on your ion chart, there are two irons. Yes, I've done this for a while. Trust me, there's two. So, so there's iron three and iron two, and there's no, I mean, literally, at this moment, there is no way to write, you You can't do this problem. It's impossible. Okay? So, I, so I'm just, I'm explaining to you. It's impossible because you don't know if it's iron plus two or plus three. You don't know that. So, like right now, you have no idea which one of these it is. However, this is not the problem you will see. Instead, any problem you're going to do with the transition metal will include a Roman numeral that will tell you the charge. So in this case, I mean, let's say the problem said this. Like, this is, would be your problem. Like, you'd see that written down. Iron 3 nitrate. Can you find that one and then make the problem? So, so obviously, which one do you think it is? The last one. Is it iron plus 2 or is it iron plus 3? Well, iron plus 3. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, what? All right, so, so I, I understand why you're being confused. So let's say like this would be your problem. The previous was just showing you why you can't do it. But like this would be like given to you on a piece of paper, figure it out. Now what this Roman numeral three implies, this is the positive charge on whatever metal it is after. Yeah, this, like you don't even need your ion chart. This is just telling you iron is a positive three charge. That's what it's telling you. Because it, it's a metal, so, so it's a good question. How do you know that it's a positive? It's a metal, so it's always positive. The first thing in an ionic compound is always positive. So the three applies to the first thing. So or whatever, if it's a one, a two, a three, or four, or five, whatever. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So you get plus three that from that, you don't even need to look at your chart. Now nitrate, you look up just like normal. Nitrate, it's NO3 with a negative one charge again. Yes. Yeah, you'll get the chart on the top. No, just three. No parent, no plus. Yeah, but no plus three, just three. So you take your one, you switch it there, you take your three. Do not, the charges, remember, the charges are canceling out. You have three positives, you're going to end up with three negatives. So you don't need to write them out. You just write Fe, and there'd be one, so you don't need to write anything. And then NO3, three. All right. What? 
prevalent? Yeah, the other stuff with the prefixes was prevalent on it. That's when you're plus two? No, there's no there's no ionic charges at all in that. Now, let's do one more, then we will be done. You're listening, this is good. So lead for uh, so lead for sulfide. Now, just so you know, there is no plus four on your ion chart. Like there is, it stops at plus three. But that doesn't matter. My point is, it it doesn't matter. You don't even need your ion chart because you're told. You have lead. Now, if you look up lead, some of you probably don't realize it. It's it's PB. So lead is PB in this case positive four. That's a, the Roman numeral for four. In case you you know weren't sure. All right. Now sulfide. It ends in IDE. What does that imply? So if it ends in IDE, that's off the periodic table. That's why I'm showing you this one. If it ends in I-T-E or A-T-E, so if it ends in eight or ice, then you look on your chart. If it ends in I-D-E, it's just sulfur. So this is just sulfur. And the charge on sulfur is negative two. Same thing. Yes, yeah, same thing on your chart. Yeah. But I, I, I don't like you thinking about it. I like you using the, the, the table. So now you flip them. You take that. You just crisscross them. You get PB2S4, which you could then simplify and should simplify to be PBS2. Okay? Because when you're writing ionic formulas, you're always going to simplify to the simplest ratio. Yes. Yes, 1 to 2. Yeah, 1 to 2. So like you'd be told this, you would have to write that for your answer. Yes, that's tomorrow. Yes, that's tomorrow. It's easy. Once you get this, the rest is easy. Yeah. What was on? Because you just want to simplify it. It's like saying, you know, it's like if you had, like if you had one to one here, you're not then going to go put another one and another one together, right? You just want the simplest ratio possible. All right, so in this case, it's the simplest ratio possible. You don't need anything more than that to balance it out. Like one lead is plus four, and then two S's add up to negative four, so that's all you need. You don't also need to then do another plus four and then another, like you just don't need that. You only need one of them to do that. Does that make sense? Okay, good. Uh, this, like this problem? Yeah. Did the sim is it the simplification part? Yeah, and how do you how do you So so that that's good. That so this plus four right here, alright, this is telling you like that that thing, that Roman numeral tells you you have a positive four. It whatever is in that thing, it applies to the element that is first, the metal. It's a positive. Okay, that's what it means. All right, so if this was like a 3, it'd be positive 3. If it was a 2, it'd be positive 2. It's always positive, and it's always to this thing. Is that, is that, is that what's confusing you? Yeah, the simplifying. Okay, the simplifying is just if you can, if you got like 2 and 4 or whatever, just divide both sides by like 2 or by 3 or whatever is going to simplify it, okay? Like just like you would in algebra or math. Exactly the same. So if you have 3 and 6, should I put 1 to 3, yeah. Or uh, 1 to 2, sorry, yeah. Why didn't you simplify the other one? Because you didn't need to. So, anything else? What if it was 42? Yeah, still do. Yep, still simplify it. All right, good. <laughs>